Hello, Jeff Zwerink here with Give and Take, joined by, today by Hugh Ross and Ken Samples, and we are here to help equip you to do evangelism. And we want to look at a cool question today. Why should I care about science? So Hugh, tell me a little bit. Give me a little bit of background of who you are. What did you study? What's your degree? And what do you find fascinating to look at? Well, I have a bachelor's degree in physics and a master's and PhD uh, in astronomy. And it was my physics and astronomy that brought me to faith in Christ. So yeah, I'm very passionate about integrating science uh, with the Bible and the Christian faith. Ken, how about you? What, what, are, what are your interests and where did you go to school? Uh, undergraduate degree was in philosophy and history at Concordia University. And I have a graduate degree from Biola University, Talbot. Very good. So, so both of you found it important to work at a ministry that is heavily involved in science. And I'm sure many are kind of wondering out there, why should I care about science? How would you respond to that question? Well, the Bible is, tells us there's two books. God reveals himself through the book of nature and the book of scripture. And the Bible tells us that we're to use the book of nature that everyone has seen and use it as a tool to bring people to the book of scripture and the foot of the cross. So our passion here is to take the latest discoveries uh, from science and use it as a tool to bring people to the traditional reasons to believe, like the resurrection. So in a very real sense, you see Christians, th that your scientific and your Christian calling are really one and the same, that they're using what you're studying to tell others about Christ, correct? Well, they're both from God, so that, yeah, it That's should a good fit. Good point. Yeah. How about yourself, Ken? How would you respond? I would say that science is a powerful enterprise in giving us knowledge and truth about the natural world. and. As Hugh suggests, uh, all truth is God's truth, so truth comes to us in the natural order, and uh, we study science to, to discover that. Uh, he reveals himself in, a, in the literal book of Scripture, and so that two books idea has always excited me, and I appreciate that it's such a significant part of RTB's point of view. That's, a, that's very good, and I, I think your, your emphasis there on truth and both your answers, I mean, you know, Hugh, you're looking at what does science have to say about the real world, Ken, you're saying that God's revealed himself two different ways. To me, that's, a, that's just powerful, that we're, we're interested in listening to what is true. Um, now, a lot of people will say, uh, you know, that science and Christianity are kind of antagonistic towards one another. In fact, I've often heard it characterized as they both can't be true, and science is kind of relentlessly showing how obsolete and archaic uh, religion, and sp including Christianity, but all religions are. Um, I take it you guys disagree. We disagree in the sense that we say that the words of the Bible are consistent with the facts of nature, the record of nature. But we shouldn't expect our interpretation of the words of the Bible to be consistent with our interpretation of the record of nature because there we have a lack of human knowledge, there's our biases, there's a sin that gets in the way. But whenever we see that there's a conflict between an interpretation of the record of nature and the interpretation of the words of the Bible, we need to see where we've done the misinterpretation. If we dig hard enough, we will resolve the conflict. You know, that, that's interesting, Hugh, because it's pointing to two different levels. One, there's the what is the truth, and then there's the what is our understanding of it. Right. And often, I, you know, I mean, quite honestly, I just think a lot of people look, oh, well, science, that's the truth, what we have there. Not recognizing that there's what nature actually does, and then there's our interpretation of it. But similarly, on the theological level, there's that saying, there's what the Bible says, but then our interpretation of right. it as well. So I, I think that that's just a profound insight that you've given us here that the facts of what nature reveal and the facts of what scripture reveal are going to be the same, but our understanding of them can be in conflict. And, and really, that's an opportunity to investigate further. Uh, Ken, how would you respond to that? I, I assume you yeah. agree they're not in, in conflict. Exactly. I'm always puzzled when people say that Christianity is unscientific because the scientific enterprise began uh, in the you know 17th century and that was dictated by a Christian worldview so it was the Christian worldview that gave birth to science uh, science flourished in a Christian context uh, so it's now, a strange thing are you to saying say that. you need to be a Christian to be a scientist not at all but yeah, I mean there are ancient civilizations the Babylonians the Greco-Romans 
Uh, even Babylon contributed scientific mathematical information. Algebra is an Arabic word, for example. But Jeff, the scientific enterprise really only began once in the 1600s, and it was in Christian Europe. And the early scientists were primarily Christian, and the worldview that, that encouraged it was a Christian philosophy of life. So, yeah, you can be a non-Christian and practice science, but historically, science is deeply rooted in a historical context of Christian thinking. So uh, let me just explore one aspect of that that uh, seems somewhat counterintuitive, at least in today's culture, is um, let's go back to those early scientists. There's this kind of perception today that the people who do really good science are the, you know, the atheists or at least the skeptics, you know, people who don't really have any religious belief. Um, your statement implies that the first people doing this were not coming from a skeptical belief, but probably more from a religious belief. Is that correct? I think that's uh, clearly true. I mean, Pascal, Newton, Galileo, all of these were... Those are big names in, th those in the are history big names of science. In the history of science. I think in some ways, Jeff, science has moved so quickly and is, has been so successful that people are often not aware of the historical and religious roots that it has. Uh, but everybody can do good science if they practice uh, the discipline. But historically and philosophically, Christianity and science are deeply connected. You know, and even skepticism has Christian roots. It's the Bible that tells us everything must be tested. Hold fast to that which is good. The scientific method comes out of the pages of Scripture. So, so I often so, remind, yeah. So, so in the Bible, we're not just supposed to read it and take it as it is. We're supposed to be testing it? We're supposed to be testing it. And the Bible tells us step by step how to put things to the test. That was the birth of the scientific method. And yeah, the so, so give us a little bit of the detail. What, what are some of the things we're supposed to do to test? Okay, don't accept an interpretation until you first identify the point of view or the frame of reference. Step two. That sounds very scientific, just from my understanding. So. Well, look at the very first page of the Bible. Before you get into the six days of creation, it gives you the point of view. Then it gives you the initial conditions. That's step two of the scientific method. Then it describes the sequence of events. That's step three, the scientific method. You get the final conditions. That's step four. I mean, all the way down, this, the seven steps of the scientific method are all laid out in the first page of the Bible, and they're repeated every time the Bible gets into a significant topic of creation. And it was Reformation scientists who saw that and said, let's apply it to our research. That was the birth of the scientific method, the birth of the scientific revolution. And yeah, I find it ironic that skeptics today are borrowing this Christian tradition to practice their skepticism about the Christian faith. But where does it come from? It comes from the Bible. And, and these are what we would call intellectual virtues, you know, mm -hmm. testing things, seeking truth. Uh, so that would be a kind of a philosophical, theological category. You know, I, I find this discussion fascinating because, like I said, often people think that science is opposed to Christianity and that Christianity is opposed to science and really seeing how in their inception and in their foundation that Christianity encouraged the flourishing of science and science actually helps us understand what the Bible has to say. I know you, know, you alluded to earlier that science was a key component of you becoming a Christian, um, not only in the, the history of it, but also in what the scientific discoveries are. So I would like in, in five seconds, what do you think is the most profound scientific discovery? The biggest impact on me was reading Genesis 1 and seeing that the events were correctly stated and the correct chronological sequence. And I said that could only happen if the one that did the deed inspired this writing. Same question to you, Ken, five seconds. Uh, Gottfried Leibniz said, um, you know, why is there something rather than nothing? Big Bang Cosmology says that there was a singular beginning to all reality. That points me to God. You know, it, it's often thought that science and Christianity are opposed to one another, but when you look at it from a historical perspective, the Christian worldview birthed the scientific enterprise. And when we look at the chronology of Genesis 1 and Big Bang cosmology and why there's something rather than nothing, all of those point to 
the authority and the, the correctness of Scripture, and that provides two things. One, it convinces us that the Bible is an accurate revel revelation of who God is, but it also gives us tools to go out and tell others who might not otherwise listen to the gospel who might be interested in science. So hopefully this equips you, encourages you in the confidence of your faith, but also equips you to go out and tell others. So let's go do that.